welcome back guys so now we are starting with a new series which is on dynamic programming okay almost every coder out there has heard about dp right because dp it is very famous and it is like that great if you want to reduce a time complexity then this is the first thing that comes to our mind like can we reduce the complexity using dp or not so uh, what do we do in dp in this we just try to store our answers in a table okay and we use it whenever we require that in future okay it sounds very simple right showing the answers and using whenever require but when you study it it seems so difficult and it seems so intimidating uh, and the only reason for that is because when you study it we you study it in a wrong way you don't follow the procedure you just you know try to study it from some random sources which in turn complicates the stuffs a lot so worry not we are starting from the very basics and i don't know how many videos will there be in this playlist but most likely after like 5 to 10 videos you'll get you'll be more comfortable in dp than you ever have been okay so let's start now before moving on to the actual coding part let's first learn a few terms to understand what we are doing and why we are doing okay so in any problem if you want to implement dp you need two things okay and those are overlapping sub problems and optimal substructure okay let me just write them down okay so we'll just try to you know understand what they are because they'll just form the foundation of dp which we'll study for okay okay so let's start with overlapping sub problems and in order to explain overlapping sub problems uh, i'll use fibonacci numbers as an example uh, i'm using fibonacci numbers because you know these are very basic problems and uh, i think more, more, by now most of you have already encountered fibonacci numbers right so fibonacci numbers follow a certain pattern a certain you know of a certain rule that fib of n will always be equal to fib of n minus 1 plus fib of n minus 2 right this is the formula on which fibonacci numbers work okay and if i ask you to write down a code for fibonacci numbers and uh, that should be based on recursion okay so i think most of you can do that but let me just try to write down a pseudo code for that okay so we have a fibonacci number right here uh fib of n so how will you solve that you'll just take a condition that if n is less than or equal to 1 right less than or equal to 1 then you just return n because uh the zeroth fibonacci number is 0 and the first fibonacci number is 1 so that will just act like as a base condition and after that no wh what do we return we return this fib of n minus 1 plus fib of n minus 2 right this is what we just simply return and that's like the complete code of fibonacci numbers for recursion using recursion right so uh, how does this help us in understanding dynamic programming i'll just tell you that in a bit suppose uh, just using recursion only i try to solve fib of 5 okay so how do you do that for fib of 5 uh, let me just use rather an image for uh, you know to show you what kind of structure it becomes when you use, when you just try to solve fib of 5 using recursion okay so this is basically an image of when you are trying to solve fib of 5 and it's very clear like for fib of 5 you need to calculate fib of 4 and fib of 3 and in turn for fib of 4 you need to calculate fib of 3 and fib of 2 right i'm just following that this this formula right here okay so what is uh, what exactly is the problem with recursion we all know that there is a very high complexity of recursion now let's try to understand why okay so Uh, let's see that for fib of five right here, I calculate fib of four and fib of three, and yeah, that, that that's that's great. That that's really correct. Okay, so I have already calculated fib of three. Okay, it's like one of the solved parts. But we see that for fib of four, we are again calculating fib of three, right? So don't you think that we are increasing our complexity by solving the same thing again and again? And if you actually try to focus a little bit more. then for then this fib of 2 part how many times are we solving this fib of 2 we are solving fib of 2 like uh, three times right so do you see how many times we are solving these same problems again and again and uh, i don't even want to mention this but we again have our fib of 1 and uh, like if you just look at this orange color how many times fib of 1 is being calculated right even though the complexity is just one uh, i have like taken an example of fib of 5 but what if i was supposed to calculate that of like 10 just try to imagine how many times i am recalculating an answer which i have already calculated again and again okay now if you remember at the start of the video i said that what is dp dp is basically 
uh, you know where you just store your answers in a table and you use it whenever it's required uh, by table I mean like in any sort of storage maybe in hash map maybe in anything you want okay that's not the issue right now so this is the issue that you will face when you will be using recursion you'll you'll uh, you'll just try to solve that same question again and again and that is exactly what we mean by overlapping sub problems these sub problems uh, because our main problem is fib of 5 right sorry uh, our main problem is fib of 5 right and uh, fib of 4 fib of 3 fib of 2 fib of 1 all of these are like sub problems but look how many times are we solving those sub problems they are sort of like overlapping right so that is exactly what we mean by overlapping sub problems if there is a question that have overlapping sub problems where you are recalculating an answer again and again then you can you know fast uh, fasten up that process by using dp and just try to think how great it would be like if you have already so, uh, stored the answer of fib of 3 uh, which uh, i don't remember it, it may be 5 or whatever it is uh, if you have already stored the answer of fib of 3 at some place and uh, if you like come again for fib 3 and instead of calculating this whole part you just say that okay i have the answer for fib of 3 just you know put that so look how much space how much time complexity you are reducing yourself so that is simply dp and that is exactly why dp is so fast because you are not recalculating those same answers again and again rather you are just using them simple enough so that is overlapping sub problems uh, and that is like one of the basic condition that you need to have to solve dp and i hope it's clear why okay so now let's talk about optimal substructure so if i go by the definition then optimal substructure is basically uh, if like you find the optimal solution of the sub problems then using them you can find the optimal solution for the final problem uh, if i just try to use the example of those fibonacci numbers then if our main problem is fib of 5 then if i try to find the best solution for fib of 3 and fib of 3 that is the sub problems then using them i can find the best solution for my final problem uh, i know it might be a little bit confusing so let's just try to understand that using an example okay uh, now I'll I'll use a very popular question of DP again and I don't know how many of you have encountered this because uh, it's not like favorites not very basic uh, this is known as the minimum path sum okay and this you will be given basically a grid like this 1 to 2 4 1 to 5 to 1 and your task is that you have to traverse you have to come from this point like this one to this one this is your source and this is your destination okay and uh, you basically have to choose like the minimum path sum you have to come using uh, that path which cost you the minimum just think of this uh, these numbers as like the cost that you have to encounter okay so what optimal substructure uh, means that if you try to you know solve uh, basically uh, you try to find the best path for all of these points and using them you try to find the best path for this one then that is the case of optimal substructure Okay. Uh, I know it might be a little bit confusing, but don't worry. So in this question, there are a few restrictions. Let's just try to solve this question and uh, that way we'll be able to understand optimal substructure. Okay. Uh, I'll start from here. I can only move to the bottom or to the right side. Okay. So if I move to the right side, what will be the new cost become of this path? It will become three, right? I am, I'll be adding from where I'm coming. Okay. And similarly, if I go to the bottom side, then it will become five. Okay. Now for this particular point, I have two options. Either I can move from here to here because I can only move to the bottom side or to the right side or either I can move from here to here and remember our question is minimum path sum we have to minimize the cost okay I don't actually think that I have remembered the question right but that is basically the gist of it okay so I can choose this, this path and I can choose this path so I will be choosing this path why because this will give me the minimum cost right so now the value of this path will become 4 correct so uh, this this you right now what you have solved is like a sub problem of the main problem even though our main problem is to reach here but this is sort of like a sub problem and you have find the optimal answer the best solution the best possible path to reach from here to here right and it only means that if you are you know if you do that for all of these sub problems then that way you can find the best answer for our main problem okay if i just try to use this approach again for all of my questions then it will become five and uh, for this point i have two options i can either come from here or come from here uh, so this is minimum i'll choose this path okay it will become like six and uh, for here i only have one option i can only move come from the top side so it will become 10 okay now for this two i have two options either i can come from here 
or either it can come from here so yeah four it's, it's minimum right so i'll just choose four now this is remember this is our final destination now here uh by the way just give me a second yeah it, it should become actually six sorry so this is the final destination now i can either come from here and either or either i can come from here it doesn't matter why because both the values are same so the answer will become seven okay uh if uh basically this is uh, this way while we were coming from here to here source destination we have solved like all the possible sub problems in the best way out there right so that is that simply optimal substructure means that if you find the best optimal solution for the sub problems then that way and using them you can easily find the optimal solution for your main problem then that is the main pro the one of the conditions for db okay let me just repeat it again so it's easier for you to understand if you are able sorry if you find the optimal solution for the sub problems and using the solution of those sub problems okay you are able to find the optimal solution of your final problems then that is known as the optimal substructure okay so this this is like basically the conditions the essential conditions for a dynamic programming question that you need to have overlapping sub problems and optimal substructure i hope all of you are clear with that now okay in next video we'll be discussing the ways with which we implement dynamic programming and those are tabulation memorization so uh, that's enough for today and thank you